This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. Today we're talking about another kind of a friction machine called a square threaded screw. Now what a square, square threaded screw is, is an inclined plane wrapped around a shaft. It's kind of like a wedge. An inclined plane is kind of like a wedge. And what we're doing with a screw is we're pushing a weight up or down the inclined plane as we tighten or loosen the screw. Here's the uh, variables that we're going to talk about. Here's a picture of a, an idealized screw. We have W, the axial force in the screw. We have M, the applied torque or moment that we apply with a wrench or a screwdriver or something to the top of the, the head of the screw. That's equal to P, this force we're going to talk about here in a second, times R, the radius, which is down here, the mean radius to the center of the threads, from the center of the screw to the center of the threads. L is the lead, the distance between two threads, and it's the amount that the screw travels if you turn it one revolution, it travels in to whatever it's being screwed into, that lead distance when you turn it one revolution. Okay, so here we're going to unwrap the inclined plane that is the threads and show one revolution. So one revolution is going to have a length of 2 pi r, circumference of a circle. So it's like a long inclined plane, and its, trap, its height is L, the lead. And up here we have uh, like the weight that we're envisioning as we tighten or loosen it as being pushed up the hill by the force P, which is the moment divided by the mean radius, R. That's horizontal. The weight is vertical. And, of course, we need to know the coefficient of friction between the screw and whatever it's being screwed into. So, <clears throat> on all these friction problems, a free body diagram is just vital. So, here's a free body diagram of the tightening of the screw. Using that little block is what we're uh, pushing up the hill, what we're screwing into, really. We've got the axial force W, we've got the force P pushing it horizontally up the hill, and we've got the uh, normal and friction forces acting on the, uh, on the sliding surface, the surface of the thread. So, <clears throat> look real closely at this free body diagram. I have the normal force perpendicular to the surface of the thread, and then I have the friction force parallel to the surface, the sliding surface of the thread, which is just, of course, equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force, which I can resolve into one force, R, the resultant, which is formed by uh, these two components, the F friction force and the N normal force, acting in an angle of the friction angle, phi sub s, from the normal to the resultant. Then I've also got the normal force acting at an angle of theta w, the wedge angle, which I calculate up here, and I'll we'll show how you calculate. It's just the tangent of this number over this number, tangent inverse of this number, l over 2 pi r. Anyways, that's the uh, angle from the, pr from the vertical that the normal force acts on. And so I'm going to use this geometry and sum of forces to solve for R and then P. This is to tighten. Note that to tighten, I'm trying to push this block up the hill. So my friction force, remember, acts opposite to that direction of movement. So it acts to the left and slightly down. So here's an example. Given a force in the screw of 100 pounds and a lead of 0.1 inches, mean radius of 0.25 inches, and the coefficient of friction of 0.2, we want to find the torque required to tighten it. 
So we need to figure out what those angles are. The wedge angle, theta w, is the tangent inverse of L over 2 pi r, just the geometry of that unwrapped thread. Point 0.1, anyway, that angle works out to be 3.64 degrees for this geometry. The friction angle, phi sub s, is just the tangent inverse of f over n, which is f over n is just mu sub s. Coefficient of friction, which is 0.2, so that angle works out to be 11.31 degrees. Now we're going to want to add those up, so I've done the math over here. 3.64 plus 11.31 is 14.95 degrees. Okay, now I've got my good free, free body diagram, which is really just the same thing over here. And I see what I want to do is get R in its Y and X components. Now, the textbook shows a similar example, different numbers, but Dr. Norville in the textbook uses a force triangle, and uh, I would also refer you to that. This is just a slightly different version where I resolve it into X and Y components, get the same answer. But look at that, too, for uh, another sort of method of solution. If I do sum of forces in the Y, I resolve my R resultant force in blue into those two components Rx and Ry. So sum of forces in the Y, one thing I have in the Y is the 100 pounds in the axial force in the screw acting down so it's negative plus R cosine of this angle. The angle with the vertical is the sum of theta w plus phi sub s. So the cosine of that's the vertical part I uh, rearrange and solve for R is equal to 103.5 pounds. Now I need sum of forces in the X, and I'm going to get P out of that. So I've got P to the right positive minus Rx, the Rx component of that, which is the sine of that angle, the sum of those two angles. So P works out to be 26.7 pounds. So I know my radius. I can figure my moment or my torque is P times R or 6.68 inch pounds to tighten it. To keep tightening from where I've got 100 pounds on it. That's sort of like an impending motion problem. At what torque will I start to develop impending motion to tighten it some more? So, you can feel this as you tighten up a screw. The more force you're putting on it, the more uh, torque it takes to, uh, to tighten it. Okay, now the other part after the question would be find the torque to loosen it. And I'm also interested in, is it self-locking? Will it come unscrewed by itself? Okay, so I do a free body diagram. In this case, I'm pushing the uh, weight down the hill so it's going to be easier and I've still got the same 100 pounds force axial in the uh, screw in this case I'm going to go P to the left and my motion is going to be to the left so my friction force note right here is to the right up and slightly into the right so remember, that's a key element to solving these friction problems is that the, force, the friction force acts opposite to the direction of motion or impending motion. So my triangle, my uh, angles all look different. N is still perpendicular to the sliding surface, so it still makes an angle slightly counterclockwise from the vertical of theta w, my wedge angle. But in this case, because I'm, my friction force is up and to the right, my resultant is over here. And from the normal, it is the friction angle phi sub s. So instead of the two angles adding, they subtract. And so here I've kind of cleaned this up and drawn it separately over here. The angle that R, the resultant between the friction force and the normal force, makes with the vertical is now phi sub s minus theta w. So similarly I'm going to do a sum of forces in the y. This time my cosine of this angle is the difference between those two 1131 minus 3.64 7.67 degrees. 
So R is now slightly less, 100.9 pounds. Sum of forces in the Y, same geometry, same numbers, except I'm using sine of 7.67 degrees. I get a P required to loosen of 13.47 pounds. Right, just a slight bit more than half of what it took to tighten it. So the moment required, the torque required to loosen it is 13.47 times 0.25 is 3.36 inch pounds. Once again, about half. <clears throat> so, big question is is the screw self locking? You can see from this angle, from this geometry down here, if the friction angle was so small that it was over here to the right side of the vertical line, that green vertical line, then it wouldn't take any force to unlock it. It would, unlo it would loosen up on its own. So if the uh, friction angle, as long as the friction angle, phi sub s, is greater than the wedge angle, the screw will be self-locking. But if I ever get so little friction, if I grease or oil up the threads, or if I have such a smooth surface between the threads and whatever they're screwing into, that I have an extremely low friction angle, I could have this angle smaller than uh, theta w, and so the screw would not be considered self-locking.